you always will have the naysayers. The naysayers, and here's the here's the one thing I will say to anyone. Anyone who's a naysayer is a loser who's trying to sell you on the fact that you should be one too. Whoa. Well, yeah. That's the truth. That is the truth. Anybody's like, oh, no, but, 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 but you know what? What you are hearing, you're hearing a loser who's now trying to sell you on the fact that you're going to be one too. And now, if you're a bozo and an idiot and you buy that, that's on you. Sure. But you also you also are the gatekeeper to your dreams. Welcome to the Rock Stars Rocking Podcast, powered by Voluntary Disruption, a show dedicated to people who are crushing their business and life goals. These are bite-sized conversations with leading rock stars in their respective industry who are pumped to share their story to help drive you to the next level. So, are you ready to rock? Speaking of rock stars, here's your host, Eric Silverman. Uh, let me ask you, is um, when it comes to social media building and social media branding, I know you're big on LinkedIn, you're big on a lot of platforms. Um, you've taken a like into Clubhouse like a lot of us uh, Apple users have. Um, but here's my question. In your opinion, is social media uh, anywhere near maturity or is it uh, still infant? I think as long as there's as long as there's ingenuity, there's going to be there's, it's going to be it's it's going to be as fresh as we are. It's hmm. a good way to yeah, look that, at it. That's, sure. I mean, that's like, that's, you know, cause I mean, let, let's look at it as, as this. It's like, you know, I can say, Hey, I want to, I want to be an amazing chef. Everything, everything I want. Someone could say everything that possibly could have been cooked has already been cooked. Why would you want to be a chef to which I, which point I, if I had a two by four, I'd break that person's kneecaps. That's a moron, you know? And so, you know, that's like, that's like, a, that's like someone saying to Picasso, oh, everything that's ever been painted has been painted. New canvas has been around forever. You, or a you, musician. You can't create anything new. You can't, you could say, you could say, well, you know, you, you could do anything, music, books, th film, any form. You always will have the naysayers, the naysayers. And here's the, here's the one thing I will say to anyone. Anyone who's a naysayer is a loser who's trying to sell you on the fact that you should be one too. Whoa. Well, yeah. That's the truth. That is the truth. Anybody's like, oh, no, but, 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 you know what? What you are hearing, you're hearing a loser who's now trying to sell you on the fact that you're going to be one too. And now, if you're a bozo and an idiot and you buy that, that's on you. Sure. But you also you also are the gatekeeper to your dreams, and so the thing is is that right now it's like you say, hey, here's the deal. I get that you lost. I mean, and I've literally told this to people because I because besides everything else that I do, I also put together, I also put together based on my book and and demand, I put together a brand intervention masterclass, which is a killer. It's a it's a it's an eight week curriculum over the course of nine weeks, and people get slayed they get slayed and filleted inside out in a good way because every saturday morning during the whole thing for two hours we get on a zoom call all the all those enrolled and they'll say blah 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 and i had one person who called me in between like like just direct call called me up said david blah 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 blah, blah. i know i'm crazy but blah 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 blah, blah. and i heard this and i heard what they're saying I'm thinking what they're saying isn't crazy. I said, let me ask you something. Or no, I didn't even ask him. I said, let me, I'm going to tell you something. Whoever told you that you were crazy, you can give that idea back to them. That's their idea. That's not yours. That's bullshit. And the bottom line is what you just said actually is one of the most sanest things I've ever heard. It isn't crazy. So give that back to them. You got it. That's what I said to him. I said, you got it? And they're like, yep. I said, good. That's and, cool. And I was like, because we have, we have the opportunity. We open the door or close the door on things that are either pro-survival or contra-survival. And that's on us. I like it. So 
All right. As we wrap up, and I, 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 I love, uh, I love all this. I, you could go on for days, as could I, because I'm, I'm learning a lot. Here's my question: You've been doing this 40 years. You've got, um, you know, two billion dollars in revenue that you've created for your clients. Um, uh, probably more at this point. Yeah. Um, when did you? Do you recall any moment in time when you realized the world was changing with respect to branding and marketing, uh, specifically speaking about social media when it came on the scene? Where you, being that disruptor, said, "No, this is not a fad. We we are diving full uh, feet first in for you and your clients." I would say, I would say it probably. I, I would actually give credit to to Gary Gary V for this because because Gary you know, he was really pushing this social media social media social media social media now All right and for those that know me it's like here's the deal I don't consider anything to be the cause of my success I consider myself to be the cause of my success I consider anyone who is successful I give them full credit for their success I don't consider it luck because luck only happens to those of us that have hustled our asses off if you if, i mean you, yeah because well, why else how can you otherwise explain the lottery winners who who 12 months later are broke because they never earned it so there's no ownership right so those that have earned it and have owned it and have maintained it i give the credit to them so the so the thing is is that you know i was listening i would hear gary occasionally and i I'd, I'd listen and i go Kind of interesting. And then I'd, I'd listen. I like what he had to say. I liked his values. I liked, he, he was very real. And the only thing was I kind of initially rejected it because I'm going, you can't give, you can't give credit to the, to the channels. You can't say, oh, if you go on Twitter, you'll you be successful. You, get, you go on Twitter, you go on Instagram, you go on YouTube, you go da, 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 it, as though those things were giving you the success. No, they're not. That's why I don't have as much respect for a company. Let's say, let's say a company like like Google, why doesn't why does a company like Google not excite me? Because they've never created anything really. They've they've taken what others have created and they've set up this line, a search engine, and other avenues which have connected the creator with those who would support those creators. I like the creators. I love the creators. I love the creators in form, terms of entrepreneurship, in terms of ingenuity in terms of initiative in terms of innovation in terms of saying no to the stupid that's the way everyone it's always been done kind of mentality and mindset so for me it was when i started listening and i started listening and started listening and i started going what can i do to bring my inclination toward disruption and shaking things up what can i do that would breathe life into those channels. And, 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 it, was, and it was actually, oh, I, actually, you just reminded me of something. This is very interesting. I act, it was actually about five, six years prior to that. It was very good on you, man. Good on you. So you just reminded me on something. I try to be prepared. <laughs> no, hey, look, I, I was the one, I, you're asking good questions. I have... I had a, a column uh, in Fast Company uh, magazine, Fast Company Online, and I had written this article. I said, I, I forget the exact title, but something along the line that if you know if if uh, if you don't actually own your brand, if you don't own what your brand is about, social media won't do more for your brand than anything else. The, the only thing that social media will do for you, if you haven't worked out your brand. The only thing that social media will do for you is it will accelerate the speed at which you tell the world that you don't stand for anything and that you're a freaking moron. That was basically what I said. And I had, and that was one of my first articles, you know, they started to go like really went pretty viral and people were like, they were like, amen, hallelujah. They were like, like, yeah. And that was the thing that, that was the beginning. Cause I always rejected anything. It's like, it was like, because here's the deal, and, and hopefully, hopefully for those of, that are listening to this, they will actually see this, because I know you're recording this, like right there where my finger's at. You see that painting? That's a painting of George Harrison. I did that when I was 15, 16 years old, okay? You so did my that? Whole, yeah. So my whole life, 
you know, there, there's piece, there, there's pieces of art all over the, all over the, all of the, like most of these are pieces of art that I've done over the years. And so the thing is, is that, you know, this is, there's another one that I, that I did like, and so anyway, the thing that happened is when I started to go from painting to illustration to um, then deciding, oh, okay, let me see if I can do some illustration using the computer as my medium, as opposed to, and I remember the first person that asked me, and it really, really, really irritated me. They said, oh, so what computer programs do you use? And I was like, oh, I gave them like the evil, I gave them the, I gave them the death stare because I'm going, you want to know, I, I could see where they were going. You want to know what computer programs I use so that you can now, by getting those computer programs, do what I, what you just saw that I did. And I'm thinking, so I, I mean, that went through my mind in a nanosecond. So I looked at that person and I said, it has nothing to do with the computer programs I use. It just happened, that happens to just be the medium that I'm, how I'm actually bringing my talent into existence. And I said to her, and I said, look, the microphone didn't make the Beatles sound good. The Beatles made the microphone sound good. That was what I told her. <laughs> That's good. How, the, how did that go? What'd she say? You could feel, you could hear, hear the headlights. You could hear the gears that had been, not been in motion for a while going. Like, well, I, I, I can assure you that question was never on my list. So <laughs> I, I'm glad I didn't ask that one. Um, so uh, my, my, my last question, right? Um, I consider you a, a mega influencer. You've, you've helped me shape what I do now. And I'm very thankful. I appreciate you coming on. You were very kind when I reached out to you. Cold reached out to the David Breyer. He answered, I don't know if it was you or not. I assume it was. He answers his messages, uh, which not everybody can say they do. Um, but my question is, um, Who's influenced you? If you had to pick one or two or three people as you were getting started in branding 40 years ago, what made you have a light bulb moment? You were like, I want to get into this field. Mm. There's a few layers to that question and, I'll, and, I will, and I will, um, I'll, I'll just give them to you. Sure, please. My whole life, I was always in, involved and inspired by art. Okay. My life was art. My I life- own that. We just talked about art. Yeah. So, but it wasn't just limited to visual art. I, I did sculpture. I mm. played drums. I love Whoa. music. I've composed music. So I love all of these things. And then I started to get into doing, you know, doing illustration, move from fine art to illustrations and then from illustration to design. So it kind of morphed. Um, and so for me, it was when I made the definitive decision to go from, you know what, do I want to do illustration or, which means that if I'm going to do illustration, I'm going to hand my illustration off to an art director. That art director then is going to do some really right things and really bring this all together like a great symphony or a great meal under the, under the, under the expertise of a chef, or it's going to be, He's going to pick freaking Helvetica and lime green. And it's going to be like the ugliest piece of shit. And I'll go, what the hell is that? <laughs> and so, and so that was at the point uh, that I decided I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to actually be a designer because then I can make sure that all the pieces that should be properly brought together are doing their job. The words the color, the the type of imagery, the way that the flow of it, the pacing of it, because like anything, you know, it's like a great movie has an ebb and a flow. A great movie has tension and calmness. Great songs have the sound and the silence. You have the, the you have these things juxtaposing, and you know, and and black and white of a design and brightness and quietness and these things are so misunderstood. People think you just be loud. You got to, or, or it's like, you got to just pound and just be like, always be, and always be on. No, if you're always on, there's never, there's never a reach and a, and a quietness and a, and a, and a, and a moment. And no, and like the best salesperson doesn't always just blabber. The best salesperson 
knows when to ask a question and then shut the hell up and allow your prospect or your customer to speak. So sure, all sure. of these things, so I'm always looking at all these things to balance them in real time. I love it. All right, quick prediction. Clubhouse is a uh, is, uh, real deal or uh, just a fad? I think Clubhouse as an avenue is re has remarkable potential. Will it, will it be, will it go through like a, a super high saturation point and then just die? I don't think so. Um, because I think that there's enough original thinkers. I think that there's enough with enough folks who are willing to explore and play. How do you moderate a room? How do you add value? You know, and then there's some of these enormously big rooms. But the thing that I think that is vitally interesting is that it's a real time. It's not like you drop a post and do, are you getting engagement? Are you responding? Right. Da, 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 da. It's not that time released type of thing. So it's just that I think it's real. I, I, I compare when people have asked me about it, I compare Clubhouse to a, a hybrid of live radio and the walkie talkie. It's the 21st century version of live radio and the walkie talkie, because you can all of a sudden the whole six degrees of separation can be like, wait a second. I just knocked down all five, uh, five degrees. I'm one degree away. I'm in the same room as fill in your greatest VIP that you were like, are you kidding? I'm hearing them right. in real time responding to something that just happened in the news 20 minutes ago. So there's that, uh, there's a dynamic that as simple and absurdly stupid as it is, is kind of rather fascinating and pretty real. It can also become an amazing time suck. So I think that I think oh, people yeah. are learning. Oh, yeah. I think people are learning to how do I how do I actually interact with this thing so it doesn't suck my life away and be like because I know that there's some people who are on like three four hours a day. I'm like, well, I don't know about them. I I have clients to satisfy. I have clients right. brands to build. That's not me. So anyway, but that's, but I, I think, I think it will have a life. I think it's going to be part, I think it's going to have a more life and relevance than I think, I think the, probably the Twitter is probably the biggest dinosaur on the social plat, uh, social media plat, uh, horizon right now. I mean, it just seems to be kind of like, okay, you plunk crap and I don't know. Yeah. It seems to be very, very like a dinosaur. I feel like Clubhouse is like when I used to eavesdrop on my parents' conversations and try not to let them hear me breathe um, before mute was invented. You can appreciate that's the, and, and a radio show, a call in radio show where caller number seven, what do you got? You got three minutes. That's right. So, um, no, I love that. And, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I don't know. I'm, I don't know if Clubhouse will be the brand, but I feel like it's the um, it's the first mover. And, you know, there's Twitter and Facebook and all these companies trying to steal that idea the way that Instagram, in my opinion, stole Snapchat. So maybe they come out on top. Maybe they don't. But I think the concept is real. I think I personally think that I think they're going to. I hope it's my belief and I'm pretty I'm, I'm hoping that it, that it stays the, the on top because what I find um ridiculous is like i mean when linkedin added stories that's useless right yep. you know and, and i and, I, and even facebook is like it's also it's like guys how many freaking stories do we have to are we supposed to be at this point don't turn me into the one chasing all of the me tooism that you guys are all into oh they're doing it therefore we're going to do it and we're going to do it and i think that that's stupid and, and 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 i you know and i have less and less respect for facebook i think facebook it's one of those things that's been grandfathered in because guaranteed you know it i know it anybody listening to this knows that if anyone mark zuckerberg or anyone else were to look at facebook today would they actually create what they have today mm. from the standpoint of how it exists to the standpoint of how its infrastructure it's in insane if you try to have to do anything to set up an ad do a thing it's like it's like are you kidding you have to hire an expert to actually help you navigate where the hell you can do to do this or do that so I know that it would not be what anyone would create today if it were newly created today. So, yeah. you know, but it's sort of like this thing that's sort of, it's going to, it's part of the landscape now. Half of the population of earth is on it. So it's like, kind of like, okay, air might be good air, might be bad air, might be on the downwind of something a little funky, but whatever. Dude, the, uh, the, the, the whole, everything you just said, for sure, the, the clubhouse idea um, is, is, is so incredible. And I feel like from a um, 
perspective of growth, they're, um, th they've created so much FOMO, fear of missing out. I just, I love the strategy. I don't know if it was even with purpose and intent. Maybe they did it because they didn't know how much server space to buy. I don't fucking know, but holy crap, has it worked? Would you agree? Yeah. 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 It's, it's kind of crazy. It's iPhone really only exclusive. You got to have an invite. Like who does that? Well, I mean, well that, see, don't, don't you remember Gmail was that way? I don't remember. Oh, I, I, I had that was, that an AOL Gmail. account forever. That was, that was Gmail. That was Gmail. Wow. Gmail. And, wow. and, and so, no, the, no, the invite only definitely has the exclusivity factor. No question. You know, and then, you know, and then it's like, and then it's like a freaking, it's a gateway drug to like, you see this person's name and this person's name and this person's name. I mean, yep. so you go, Oh my God. So, and so, and you can, you could be here in, you know, Elon Musk, or you could be here in Grant Cardone, or you could be here in, you know, Damon, or you could be here in, you know, so you. yeah, or me, there you go. <laughs> Well, listen, man, I, I appreciate it. I'm going to um, I'm going to go out on a limb and ask you a question that could totally backfire. And I'm willing to put it out there and fall on the sword. But um, I imagine all of your incredible quotes you've received that you can talk about have been always organic. Damon, John, Grant Cardone, Claude. I don't give a shit about organic or not. Is there anything you can give me a soundbite on that would help me get some more rock star guests on this podcast that are, that are friends with yours about me and how I do this? Well, I would say, I would say basically it's like, there are two silvers that I actually have in my, in my network, you know, there's Claude Silver and then there's Eric Silverman and it, you need to make it part of your business to actually know both. And if you, if you are anybody that values anything about your reputation, you need to get yourself on Eric Silverman's podcast here right now. Oh, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. Uh, and, uh, you know, always uh, I teach salespeople for a living for 20 years. And I always say, don't ever, ever hesitate to ask for the order. So I'm not uh, I'm not afraid to do that. Uh, listen, um, David, you have a best selling book, uh, Brand Intervention, uh, right there on your website and anywhere you can buy books. It's incredible. Um, but I, I heard you have a new book coming out with a uh, with a Ford to uh, my, uh, my new uh, found friend, pseudo celebrity that I look up to, uh, Claude Silver. Is it true she's writing the forward to your new book? She's actually already, already written it. And, uh, Whoa. and, and uh, it's, it's already written and it's, it's beautiful. And I for, uh, forever uh, hold in my heart what she wrote when, when we wrapped it up. Um, it, was, it, it was, it literally gave her chills. It was just That's so awesome. And, it, and so, uh, so Claude, if you're listening to this, you know that I love you to the ends of the earth, which I do. And, um, and she's a dear, 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 dear heart. And uh, I, I, my nickname for Claude, I call her the soul pillow. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, I'm honored that you gave me such a fabulous uh, quote where I'm in the same sentence as her. Holy crap. I'm, I'm shitting myself with all seriousness. That's amazing. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, when's the drop date? When, when's the release date? I know you're not going to tell me the name of the book. I asked already, guys. Don't, it's not coming. But what's the, what's the drop date? Do, do we have that in the works? The drop? Well, obviously, obviously the whole, the whole uh, 2020 through everything, everything off. But I would say, I would say the, the drop, what I would like to think, let me think here. Uh-oh, put him on the spot. I would say, I, I would say, I would say first quarter 2022, basically okay. one year, one year from now is that, is that by then or sooner. Okay. Awesome. Well, we're going to be on the lookout. Everybody go to risingabovethenoise.com. Follow David Breyer, not Breer. That's an inside joke and a whole nother story. Uh, follow him anywhere you are on social media, Clubhouse, LinkedIn, Instagram. Uh, he's probably got a Facebook page too, uh, regardless of what we just talked about, um, because he's smart and he's a branding guy. Um, so follow him there. For everybody that is watching the, uh, the podcast here, for anybody listening anywhere you consume podcasts, if you have questions, comments, uh, ideas, suggestions, thoughts please drop them in the comment section if you're so inclined leave me a review i'd appreciate it five stars would totally rock and for everybody behind the scenes that helped me put this together at the rock stars rocking podcast i'm eric silverman it's been a pleasure talking to david Breyer, and i very much appreciate your time my friend absolutely man totally a blast thanks everybody
Take care. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of the Rock Stars Rocking Podcast. If you haven't done so already, make sure you're subscribed to the show wherever you consume podcasts. And if you feel so inclined, please leave us a review. Five stars would totally rock. Until next time, rock stars, keep rocking.